I would like to thank the organization for the human brain mapping and Yetian and Andrew Zaleski, the organizers of this symposium, um, the opportunity to present our work in which we try to understand how best to interpret uh, individual variations of brain age in cognitively healthy adult populations. Brain age results are a relatively generic and straightforward measure, uh, which is broadly interpreted as biomarkers of brain health. There are different names to refer to these residuals. Here we will use uh, delta or brain age gap uh, back in this territory. In the last few years, um, aging research has shown how cross-subject variations in delta relate to several cognitive, clinical, and other health outcomes. Given these results and that delta reflects variation in structure in areas that are highly susceptible to age, it has led to the common assumption that to some important degree, delta reflects ongoing neurobiological aging processes. That is, delta is a measure that is sensitive to the rate of brain aging. It has uh, been pointed out, however, that this is not necessarily the case as um, delta is residualized by age and it reflects deviation uh, from the expected norm akin to normative models. And this can also reflect pre-existing differences in brain structure. This leads to, broadly speaking, to possible interpretations of uh, brain edge uh, findings uh, with uh, other phenotypes. Either they are explained by slope effects or intercept. In the first case, uh, the slope case, the findings uh, should be explained by uh, ongoing uh, brain changes determining the covariance structure of uh, back uh, that is uh, through um, uh, rate of brain aging effects and also one can uh, hypothesize that also predicts uh, future uh, back predicts future trajectories of brain decline alternatively the findings may be explained by variations in brain structure that happen earlier in life uh, they can have different origins, um, such as it can be, for, of course, uh, earlier brain insults, but they can also reflect lifelong stable differences uh, or, uh, that uh, have either developmental or congenital origins. On display here, there's a schematic scenario on how brain age can be related to cognitive function and dementia uh, through life, either through slope or intercept effects. In both cases, um, older people with higher uh, delta should, would show poor cognition and also would show higher or uh, similar rates of dementia and higher than uh, uh, people with low uh, back. Uh, but uh, um, cross-sectional data cannot uh, disintegrate, uh, cannot separate, uh, determine uh, the origin of uh, of this uh, of these uh, relationships on the longitudinal data can tell. So with uh, this, uh, we aim to test these two possible interpretations of brain aging, whether it largely reflects ongoing changes in the brain or whether it reflects lifelong stable differences in the brain, or both, uh, using longitudinal MRI data and indices at birth. We hypothesize that uh, if brain uh, age um, largely captures some brain changes in the brain or brain aging, cross-sectional brain age delta should be related to measures of brain change, such as uh, change in brain age delta or change in uh, brain features. Um, also, a secondary measure um, is that uh, uh, brain age delta should uh, spread in brain age. Uh, this would give evidence that delta values are changing with age so that new information is added in, in, in delta. <clears throat> we for the lifelong stability, we hypothesize that uh, uh, cross-sectional um, brain age delta, but not longitudinal delta, should be related to factors at birth, known to have uh, large, largely stable effects in the brain. And uh, here we chose uh, birth weight and polygenic scores of brain age. We use um, a UK biobank as the main sample and a second data set from LifeBrain Consortium that includes several longitudinal European data sets as a biological record. Participants with only one time point available, uh, one MRI, uh, where uh, uh, were introduced in the training data set. While the test data set consists of individuals with at least two um, MRI 
uh, observations for the UK baseline. This uh, meant that we had around 1,400 participants with two observations uh, separated by a little bit over two years of years apart. And for the replication data set for LiveBrain, we had uh, 1,500 uh, individuals with uh, 2.8. On average, 2.8 MRI observations, and on average, the participants were followed 3.4 years. We train a drainage model on the cross sectional datasets using a uh, boosting algorithm as the main analysis and uh, lasso as a technical replicate. So, all analysis, uh, but the genetic one, uh, were replicated both by uh, biological and uh, technical replicate. We perform a quite standard processing that included tenfold cross validation and a randomized zipper parameter search and use uh, structural T1 weighted regional and global features, uh, which included uh, data from cortical thickness, volumary intensity, uh, gray weight matter contrast, and, uh, yeah, and subcortical volume and intensity. The models uh, were uh, um, trained on cross sectional data and applied to an independent longitudinal datasets. The metrics show uh, shows uh, comparable results to um, existing reports in the literature, at least uh, comparable to those that do not use a deep neural network. First, uh, we test the uh, cross-sectional drainage defined as the center set. Uh, so our mean, mean drainage is related or was associated with more longitudinal change in delta uh, using linear models. Um, we compute uh, change in delta uh, as uh, uh, computing a, a slope of change uh, uh, using linear models for each participant. <laughs> the results did not show any positive association between higher cross-sectional delta and higher change or higher longitudinal change in delta. In fact, we actually found a negative association between the two in the main analysis, but it was not replicated in the, in, uh, the replication uh, analysis. We then just equivalent tests. Essentially, we apply the same models, but with a variable new hypothesis, with the aim to reject uh, fx equal or bigger to a certain size. The equivalent tests show that we could reject uh, positive relationships of beta more than 0.01 delta years in all three analyses. Uh, this is grossly equivalent to rejecting a variance explained of cross sectional delta uh, on uh, longitudinal delta of 0.2% or um, something that would explain, or that the back would, uh, cross sectional back would explain um, a spreading of delta of 0.2 or 0.6 years through the data sets age range depending on the analysis. Next, we repeated the analysis substituting change in drainage uh, delta for a main component extracted from a matrix of brain change. Similarly, uh, we did not find any significant relationship between, uh, between subject variations in cross-sectional delta and longitudinal change. And finally, we repeated this analysis by um, comparing or relating uh, cross-sectional delta with um, each uh, feature that was uh, fed in the, into the brain age models. Here we found four to six features that were related to cross-sectional delta, and all uh, were related to all, to all belong to ventricular uh, expansion. Uh, yeah. And finally, we tried to assess the degree of spread in brain age delta throughout the datasets age range using the formulation from Smith uh, in the paper, the you know, image paper in 2019. Um, here are the results. So, um, briefly speaking, the results show a modest but significant spread of brain age delta that correspond roughly to 0 0.38 years of spread through the data set age range. Um, this and the previous analysis su suggest that inter individual variations in brain age delta do relate. To aging or to the pace of brain aging, but just so modestly. Um, this part, or we can conclude this this set of analysis uh, just by uh, 
saying that it aligns more or less to uh, previous theoretical claims and empirical observations that show that uh, between subjects variations in, in for sectional MRA dictation analysis quite poorly to cover the uh, structures uh, within individuals. <clears throat> Next, we test whether the delta were associated with early life factors to, uh, thought to be stable throughout the life. Now, uh, first we use um, a normal self-reported uh, birth rate uh, using linear mixed models. We found that um, birth rate was associated with uh, very nice delta in the expected direction. And this was replicated both in the technical and the biological replicate. Uh, however, we did not find any association of uh, um, yeah, any interaction between time and birth weight uh, that the, was able to explain uh, that. And finally, we tested whether uh, collision scores of brain age related to uh, brain age delta and change in brain age delta. We computed the PCS scores of lineage by using a mature normal uh, model based on a GWAS study of the uh, brain age data phenotypes in the UK via bank training data set. So it was independent to the uh, test data set. Um, the analysis, the mixed models show that the polygenic scores of brain age were indeed associated with, uh, with delta. But uh, they were negatively associated with uh, uh, a yeah, uh, change in brain age delta, or the um, interaction term was negatively associated with, uh, with that. Um, the both findings were replicated in in the in the last in the last on the technical replicate, but we didn't have data for the biological replicate. Since the, P the PGS uh, scores uh, were computed on uh, cross-sectional brain age delta, this relationship might not be that surprising, but it suggests a different genetic foundation for longitudinal brain age. Um, so as a sum up of these two analyses, uh, both brain age, uh, both birth weight and genetic liability explain a modest portion of the variance in brain age. However, we kind of consider this relationship as a proof of concept on how we can better understand uh, some determinants of brain health in other populations or where to look. Um, altogether, um, this finding suggests that uh, individual variation in, uh, in delta, in cross-sectional delta, only to a very modest degree reflects actual pace of brain aging instead the largest part of inter-individual variation in delta uh, seems to originate before the sample's lower bone. In this case, it would be either 18 for the live brain data set or 45 for the UK Biobank data set. And uh, some of this uh, normal variation in delta seem to reflect uh, or seem to be linked uh, to very early life influences on brain structure that might even be present at birth. Um, so of course, uh, it is important that uh, these results uh, pertain only to T1 weighted data and uh, cognitively healthy adult populations. So the degree to which brain age will reflect on growing effects of aging will uh, most likely will depend on sample specific features, modalities, algorithms, and play. But we argue these results should at least be partially generalized to other uh, to other uh, normative, normative and residual based uh, modeling approaches, as well as to developmental samples. But of course, empirical tests are required. In any case, uh, we um, conclude that uh, we are, argue uh, caution is required when interpreting this scores, uh, delta score, delta or back as indices of remission without available longitudinal data. These uh, results are mostly included, or most of them are included in the ELIFE paper and are also um, present in this poster I, that I would, yeah, I would uh, suggest that if you have thoughts, you can comment and see me and discuss. It. Um, thank you very much. And uh, of course, I would like to end up uh, uh, thanking all the 
as we see in groups and also the external collaborators and also LiveBrain and Biobank for providing the data and European Research Council and uh, Norway uh, Research Council for providing the funding. Thank you very much.